Welcome back to Flow State Activation. My name is Sumit Chatterjee. I'm a flow state specialist here to help you feel your best and perform your best. Man, today I'm feeling really good. We were just on Enlightened Masculinity Podcast. Go and check that out. Also, start to understand this one thing. What if David Goggins had the spiritual tech of Eckhart Tolle? Oh, okay. What if we could take a mind and we could take a body and we could put them together? Now, I respect David Goggins, okay? I think we need a little bit of that tough love. Stop being a bitch, right? That attitude. I think we do need that. But if you hear his voice, there's a lot of tension behind it. There's effort behind his voice, okay? It's like he's trying and it's like he's trying to impress. And I, I hear this in a lot of male leaders. There's still a push with the voice. Now to challenge with the voice is very valid, but to push with the voice could be coming from some kind of a trauma. So Eckhart Tolle could call it the pain body, right? So you might have a pain body attack as a man and not even know it, okay? Where you have this extra push, this extra energy that you're throwing out there. Or as you learn to respond in a lot more calmer way, okay? So I'm not saying that this is the go-to rule, but this is what I've understood in my own life, okay? Obviously, I don't want to be Eckhart Tolle, okay? I'm sorry, I don't, okay? The man is a genius. The man has the spiritual tech. He's been through that cycle of rebirth in his own mind, technically, right? This is the way I think about it, because he's going into catabasis, going into the darkest parts of himself in order to, what? Pull himself out. Change his mindset, come back to the now, not be attached to the past or, you know, hyperextending himself into the future. Even just like, you know, let's take Viktor Frankl, man search for meaning, right? This is dangerous mental tech. If you can have that confidence, that I can survive through anything and I have a bigger vision in mind, man, you as a man will be so powerful. This is why I love reading The Way of the Superior Man, bro. But I don't think David Data can fuck, bro. Look at the guy. And look at Eckhart Tolle, right? It, it, it seems that Eckhart Tolle can't hurt a fly, but what if you got Eckhart Tolle doing jujitsu? Wow, get him shredded. I think this is a very good point that a lot of guys, they have this unconscious belief that I've gotta be helpful, I've gotta fix things, I've gotta be extra nice and extra polite. And a lot of guys carry this within themselves in very, very small ways. Even I do it, I notice it on my videos, right? I notice I do this. But I also have a beast, a monster, okay? That comes in and, and look, they coach each other. The priest and the beast, they coach each other, my friends. You see, so there are gonna be times in your life where you need more of that young energy. You need more of that push. And there's gonna be times where you need to reflect and actually not do anything. Be the silent observer. Go into silence so you can get those revelations so that you can move forward. The latest tech that I'm starting to understand is I've got to go into silence more and trust how I will be guided. Because as I'm on this Primal Sutra path working, I understand I will be guided by certain things. I'll be moving along a process that is going to help me challenge myself, face my fears, and evolve. I'm not trying to fight my fears. I'm going to acknowledge them whatever we focus on will grow there is a huge element of this in this space but still people choose to focus on the negativity as a positive psychologist i don't want you to just be this toxic positive person yeah whatever man good vibes only bro yeah you can do that i have nothing against that right i i don't react to that because i understand that almost in a sense it's like yeah, I'm just going to be positive 24-7. Why? Because it's my choice. I choose to be happy. 
You see? Okay? So, yes, you can say that, oh, yeah, but aren't you, you know, you're seeing all these happy people out there on social media. That's all fake, bro. That's all fake, bro. Yes, there are certain people who are genuinely happy and they do take photos and they, they do share it with the world. And now I have UFOs visiting me, you see? So that's another confirmation. But besides that point, man, you want to start to understand, like, what are you really there to do? What's your purpose for being there? A lot of you guys have FOPO, okay? Not FOMO. Fear of other people's opinions. Fuck them. Fuck other people's opinions. They're usually projections. They're usually some other mixed in thing in there. And you're going to have to keep tolerating it. Until you what? Until you forgive them. This is off of the laws of Christianity. Buddhists also call this going into refuge. Each different religion has their own way of saying that I'm going into my internal world now, right? I'm going into my solace, my cave, my safe space, whatever it is. That part of me that knows that I am pure awareness, that I am that I am presence. So imagine David Goggins, right? Let's go! Yeah, 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 yeah! That video of like, uh, David Goggins on Mars, like he's already on Mars before everybody else, he ran there. Um, yeah, that's kind of the mentality that I have for myself. I'm like, I wanna have that mentality. Like, that man is disciplined, right? That man is sharp and you need that. If you're gonna be a spiritual person, you need discipline, my friends. You can't be like, oh, I'm kind of a little bit okay with everything. I'm not like, I'm not hating on anybody. I it's like, we are so afraid of having an opinion nowadays. You get what I mean? We're so fucking afraid of having an opinion, bro. You don't have to be in neutral all the time. Okay? You can speak your mind, bro. You can be whoever you want to be. Let's say it like that. Because a lot of guys, they hold themselves back simply because it is their own imagination preventing them. And I really do think God speaks to us through our imagination. I really think so. Okay, guys? Devil speaks to us through what? Fantasies. Okay? Tries to get us to live in that deception, that delusion, that demiurgic spirit of like, so if you're a man watching right now, you know, I don't want you to lose that drive uh, of like, you know, fuck bitches, get money, right? That can be there. But on top of that, if you add a mental and a spiritual tech, right? To regulate your nervous system, to feel fucking good in your body, right? Like, I feel good today. You get what I mean? I feel good. My system feels strong, it feels good. It feels very, very relaxed at the same time. I'm alert. You see what I'm saying? I'm alert and I'm shifting. You know what Osho said about, I am a spiritual playboy. At least he's admitting it. He, I am 100% non-serious. I am just here to play. Play? is a baseline actually your most natural state of beingness is actually play if you think about it right because children aren't really taught how to play children just know intuitively that they've got to play it's an instinctual thing right even animals play that's how you know and if your kids or whatever that they're like missing out on that rough housing or you're not getting that play and, and you as an adult, maybe you're ashamed of playing or just being goofy or jumping around or doing something where you feel liberated or free, right? You need to understand that you are putting those shackles on you, my friends. It's from your belief systems. It's from your limiting beliefs, right? A lot of the times the limiting beliefs are like the filter with which you live your reality. You know, Jared Psych Lawrence, he told me, I said, I'm gonna find time to watch your masterclass. He said, make time. He corrected me. And I like that in a mentor, all right? Whoever it is, right? I don't know him that well. Like he's, I know of him, right? I've been in the cosmic code and, and so forth. So I know of him. So, you know, I, I like the fact that this is a man who's correcting me still with the positivity that we're all gonna win. I wanna see you succeed. I wanna see you thrive, right? 
I love that energy, bro. And I want to share that with you guys today because it's like, I'm going to pass that forward to you guys, right? Like, I love it. Like, I want to see you guys thrive, bro. I, I really want to see you guys win. Can't keep winning if you're putting too much importance on your thoughts and too much importance on your emotions. You get that? You're being either too emotional or too intellectual. Either you're being too heady and in your head and intellectual and overanalyzing and ruminating. I know everything. I know what to do. I And then you have the other side where it's like a lot of men nowadays, they're so sensitive, bro. I make one little comment and they break. What? Bro, what are you talking about? You can't call a naga spineless, my friend. We're all spine. There's a difference. You can try, you can throw labels at me like, oh, your skin is like this, and then I shed my skin as the snake, you see? They make fun of your temporary paragraph on chapter whatever, whereas you got entire volumes of this shit brewing and, and you're making it, right? And this is why I also value consistency, right? That discipline to just take that shotgun approach, right? I've had a lot of people dissuade me from making videos every day. I don't get it, man. Like, what? what is it to you, right? Is it reflecting back on your reality that you can't do it every day? Is that why you're getting fucked up about it? Because you're like, oh, but you're working too hard soon. You're putting too much effort into it. Well, that's what I'm saying too. You guys are putting way too much effort into this. This is my life, bro. I'm showing up as me. I'm, I'm trying to be the most golden version of me, bro. I'm gonna give myself the horsepower, you see? that pulls me along, but my horses aren't even thinking like a horse, bro. You get what I mean? That's a weird analogy, but you know, it's like, why is he talking about a horse and carriage? Like, has he traveled back into the middle ages? I probably have, I don't know. But in this analogy, we clearly have, so let's go along with it, right? So, <laughs> I mean, I don't know where that came from, but let's go along with it, right? So the horse and carriage, right, is dragging you along. The horsepower is moving you along. That is God's plan. God's plan, okay? That is moving you along. This higher calling, this purpose, when you can be silent, when you can have that pure awareness, whew, you have this extra energy, this strength, this inspiration. Where's this coming from? This cosmic divine intelligence that just flowing through me and out of me, right? It's like, I don't need to try. I've stopped putting so much effort into like appearing a certain way or trying to be this type of man. Okay, I've, I've let go of that, man. And I actually find myself a lot more badass and a lot more free in my own expression once I do that. You know, a lot of the times I just don't fuck with people, man. You know, I don't. I don't like people. I don't like people, man. This is why I connect with like aliens and like higher beings and so forth. You get what I mean? Like, I find that I connect greater with them than ordinary people. Because I've known this, and, and again, I understand this comes from my trauma too, okay, with the schizoid archetype and, and so forth. Uh, by the way, schizoid archetype is associated more with bioenergetics. If you don't know what your bioenergetics profile is, you're, you're fucking yourself over, okay? So you got to know that in order to heal your core wound and then move forward. If you're following this path working, okay? Any other path working, I would tell you, you know, follow whatever, okay? If you're doing, I don't know. There's so many things called art of living nowadays, right? But shout out to Epictetus's art of living uh, as a Stoicism 101 that we started with in MC Nation. So look, your value doesn't depend on your horse and carriage, bro. The horse and carriage is moving you along. But now give those horses such an intelligence to go through this maze of life. And that is your connection with your spirituality right with those invisible powers and there's a way a structure of doing these right in the puranas or in the vedas or you know even in other texts hebrew texts right aramaic the bible was first written in like aramaic or something right like and it was translated okay now if you look at gematria okay some of you understand this that the world players on the stage put in any of their names in Gematria and start to reveal that these people are all scripted, okay? These people, these celebrities that you're seeing are all scripted characters, guys, okay? Andrew Tate? Are you saying that I'm the most dangerous man on the planet because I understand that? Okay, there, there's still a boyhood, like, proving myself energy in the background of his voice, right? And you can hear it. 
any logical man can hear it. Now, I'm not taking away from his success or whatever, that, that's okay, right? Whatever he did is, he did. That's not my reality though. And you shouldn't be convincing men that just cause, you know, you have all these cars and all these extra things that you can get laid. I mean, think about it. How is Andrew Tate getting women? It's clear, man, it's his money. And it's his personality, which is so outrageous that it cuts through the noise of the traffic of the internet. Genius deceptive marketing plan of having Hustlers University and like having the students like, you know, fucking, oh my goodness, right? So the teenage boys, they love to follow that guy, right? Cause it's like, oh, he trolled a feminist again. <laughs> Let me check. It's but after a while, I mean, honestly, what is happening on the planet, right guys? We understand that these are all scripted characters. I believe it, man. I believe Andrew Tate is a scripted character, okay? And I do think he might be related to Aleister Crowley, if you really think about it. If you really type his name into Gematria, you'll understand this. Andrew Emery Tate is 666 in Gematria, is the sign of the beast. Start to really get this, guys. I'm not making the shit up. Now, a lot of people are going to call me a conspiracy theorist and like, he doesn't know what he's talking about and wah, 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 wah. Okay, maybe you're an Andrew Tate fan and you're hearing this for the first time. You're going, wait, what? Wait, what? Right? Then you type in Primal Sutra into Gematria and it's 888. What do you think about that? Okay, what do you think about triple eight over triple six? Okay. Infinity. God's power wins over. Okay, the truth wins over. I'm not just like, oh, I'm going to choose Islam because then it won't be attacked by people. People are too scared to, okay? Or whatever his reasoning was. Hey, I'm sure he's a great man. Shout out to all my Muslim brothers and sisters out there. There's so many cool things about that, man. Ramadan, also just fasting, bro. You know the benefits of fasting? That That's so powerful, right? Watching, man. Mashallah, man. Let's get it. That's cool, bro. But if you're doing it to, like, kind of flex on others, like, I'm a Buddhist, though, you know? Like, I'm a Buddhist, you know? check it out bro it's like you're still posturing yourself you get what i mean like you're trying to posture yourself as this kind of dude whereas your own life is not that you see and we do this all the time we're fucking hypocrites bro we do this a lot of times because i understand i'm not a fucking nice guy in my own true nature like who i would choose to be oh hello sir i find that guy is still stuck somewhere in a little cage there's a version of me somewhere that I feel like that society wanted me to be really agreeable and Bengali would call him like a uh, nice guy would be like Bhalo Manush, right? Like just so ultra polite and so just girls would be like, ah, oh, but he's so sweet though. He's such a cutie pie, right? Bro, no man wants to be called cute. Are you fucking kidding me? He's like a brother to me though. Stop giving a fuck about so many people's opinions of you. Be who you truly want to be and back yourself. With the wisdom and the knowledge that you have, you got to back yourself as a man. And as a woman too. I mean, now women get into this weird state where they get possessed almost. Right? By this. And I've heard women tell me this. They're like, whoa, I don't know what came over me, but I just started yelling. Hey, chica. That's a trauma response, okay? That's masculine armoring, okay? You are not like that in your true authentic, like badass feminine, divine feminine nature. You're probably not like that. You're probably not like overthinking everything and like, you're trying to fit into a male world with only male principles, but you're a female. Like you don't have a sisterhood. You don't have any feminine energy that you get from anybody. Maybe you have issues around your father, okay? Or your mother. There's many things that can happen on this path working of life that you got to understand. You got to take responsibility for because you are the generation line. You are the black sheep of the family that's going to change everything around, right? You're the one with the strength and the skills that can actually move the needle forward. So yeah, I might feel like, oh, I have all this responsibility to, you know, save the next generation. Yeah, you do. But guess what? You're also being watched. You're being communicated with as what? as a product of life. And I choose to become a producer and a product of life at the same time. 
on Dharma and on Tao, right? And on my calling, but at the same time understanding that there is a sacred geometry, a design, a perfect design, right? That is out there that if I just get out of my own way, if I stop pushing so much and trying like, oh my goodness, it's not there yet. That once you just let go of that pressure and you find that it's already here, man. We take the pressure off of ourselves. We sometimes need to take pressure off of ourselves and don't feel so guilty for resting, bro. A lot of people, they conflate two topics together, okay? They conflate two different separate topics that are mutually exclusive and they blend them and enmesh them together. And that's a big problem with a lot of you. For the priest beast, sometimes the priest is gonna be more active. Sometimes the beast is gonna be active, but it's not like a priest beast mode, okay? Which I heard someone say recently. It's not a mode. It's not like a, a zone. It's not a temporary thing where you're like, oh yeah, I kind of felt like a badass for like a couple hours there, but now I'm back to my regular nine to five or doing my own. It's like, it's not that, you see? Even in your nine to five, you carry that energy within you. You're like, all right, whatever, let's go. I'm up for the challenge, right? It's like, I'm not ducking this, let's go. You know the certainty with which a Messiah speaks, okay? Have you guys ever watched that um, Netflix show, The Messiah, right? This is a kind of, uh, this man who they think is the second coming of Christ or whatever. And then, you know, he gets <clears throat> thrown in jail or whatever because he does all these public stunts and things like that, like walking on water and, and so forth. And uh, it's a fascinating show. I don't know, it, it's only one season. I, I don't know why they didn't make another season for it, but it kind of sums up the whole storyline in one season, I guess. And um, I'm sure there will be a lot of religious problems too. So they might have had a lot of backlash once they made that or something like that. That's why they didn't continue it. There gotta be some kind of, you know, reason, okay? It's like the same thing when I see like, oh, like every single fucking movie nowadays, right? It has to have a gay person, it has to have a trans person, it has to have a black person, it has to have a, bro. No, it doesn't. It's a story in Jersey, a bunch of white friends. Why are you gonna have the token black guy? But everybody needs to be included. Everybody needs to be inclusive and a part of this thing. No, bro. It's like you all thrive in your own tribes and then you come together and then you communicate from those two tribes. And it's like, that's a beautiful thing, right? The United Nations is such a beautiful concept and I've done internships for the UN, okay? So I understand. I know the background scenes of this shit, right? I know the background scenes of this, guys, okay? I've seen it all. I really have seen a lot in this life and I understand that there are certain things going on. Now, you don't have to believe me again, okay? You don't have to believe me, but Gematria is like one of the codes for you, okay? It's going to predict what is happening in the future. Basketball was a thing called sacred ball, right? Back in the day. And it has very, very specific symbolism in that sport, any sport for that matter, anything at the world stage, any movie you watch, all these sacred symbolism there to transform your mind, make you a weak ass puppet in the hands of the government, in the hands of somebody else. Okay. In the hands of some religion, in the hands of some other bureaucracy or, or greater body of knowledge or something like kind of preventing you from showing up and being who you truly are. Maybe you're an academician. You have to always remain professional, always remain you know, aesthetic, and then you get one earring and then they kick you out of the college campus or something. Bro, if that's the case, that's nonsense. I don't care if my professor is covered in tattoos. I really don't. I'm not learning from the color of his skin or how slant slanty his eyes are or like, or like the size of his chin. Bro, I'm here to learn from this individual who's gonna give me the gift of knowledge, the gift of truth, in fact, their perspective of it one flavor of it. And it is up to me as a culinary, you know, mystic scientist to take what they're saying and then add spice and flavor and an understanding that this is how I choose to integrate this information with my support system, my mental, physical, energetic, emotional, spiritual support system, okay? And once I have that philosophy of the love of wisdom, I am gonna peer forward and I'm gonna continue to what? To evolve, to grow, to become the greatest version of me, right? 
I become more reliable throughout time. I become more patient throughout time. Some of you think this, this is bitch moves, right? Oh, why are you so patient, man? Just go and get after it, okay? Listen, I, I, I love the earlier culture and the earlier generation that said, you know, pick yourself up by your bootstraps and you just gotta work, okay? I get that. I get the spirit of that. But also, why are you just working because somebody else told you to work? Bro, what? What? You're supposed to, though. You're supposed to. Like, everybody does it. Um, how about no? Like, what if someone, uh, you know, positioned themselves or, or postured themselves like this? All my friends are eating these radioactive toads, you know? And they're like really cute toads, though, from this really nice restaurant. And would you like to join us? I mean, your life is to totally going to transform, you know? These toads are going to kind of burn your tongue a little bit. I mean, it's going to be a little bit bad, but eventually, you know, you might throw up the next week, actually. But where are the fucking benefits then? What the fuck am I going to get from eating this radioactive toad? Am I going to become Toad Man or some shit? And people do this to you all the time, bro. They'll, they'll suggest things for you on your spiritual path working and your self-improvement journey, right? Have you tried this new diet? Hey, maybe if you did this differently, then you would finally, you'd be somebody, right? I'm already a somebody in my mind, bro. I'm already a fucking celebrity or, or a, a big person in my mind, bro. And that's why I need spirituality, because I have a big ass ego. You see what I'm saying? I recognize that I have a big ass ego. That big, <laughs> I'm just laughing because it, it's an acronym for Bay, right? Big ass ego. Um, so me and Bay, right? <laughs> it's like all the people who are like run by their ego are like, you know, that's Bay, bro. That, that That's just Bay, you know? <laughs> that's quite funny. Anyway, um, Let's see that ego is like pulling you forward and you're in the back seat, right? You're gonna understand that you need enough spiritual love protection to balance that out and actually neutralize that energy a little bit. I'm not trying to tame that animal with it. You're negotiating. So I realized like to balance out my giant ego, I need a giant spirituality, okay? A giant soul that can handle that, handle that heat. If you can't handle that heat, then get out of the kitchen, okay? Get out of my kitchen. I'm Golden Ramsay in this bitch, right? Or whatever. So instead of being this kind of lopsided type of character, why don't you practice not having a priest beast mode, but having a priest beast life, bro? Why don't you maintain a better lifestyle for yourself that you have that discipline and that certainty and that sharp edge, you know what I mean? that you don't have to rely on anybody to get any validation or approval, bro. They're gonna crave it from you. It's gonna be vice versa. They're gonna like reach out to you and it's like, oh my gosh, she finally talked to me, right? That's what you're gonna think of. Obviously, you don't wanna be so easily accessible and you don't wanna be so difficult to be accessed either, right? There, there's gotta be a midpoint where you actually, when people are asking for help, you're able to serve, right? You have that mentality like, I'm ready to go. Okay, whatever problem, bring it to me. I'm gonna eat it up. I eat problems like that for breakfast, right? That's the greatest mentality that you can have as a priest beast. Problems? Bro, I eat problems for breakfast, okay? That's, that situation to me is a flea compared to my potential. And yeah, that might sound arrogant or whatever, like I'm trying to posture or do things. But I genuinely believe that in the moment. And who are you to take that away from me? You don't know what's going on in my mind. I can have the most grandiose, messed up, abstract imagination in the world. But you're, you're only caring about my results. So as long as my results are there, I'm clearly doing something right. But there's also an energetic thing, right? Like, let's take a, a very miserable bodybuilder who had to, like, starve himself for months and just, like, you know, like, just pee out all the, just get so dehydrated and then get on stage and like, that person, you look at them, they're fucking, you know, mm, chiseled, jacked, you know, ripped or whatever. But then you start to discover that their mental well-being is dirt. Okay, they're like a zombie on that stage or something, right? And from all these drugs and like neurochemicals, it's like, you don't need that forceful energy anymore, my friend. Yes, yes, you as a man have got to learn how to dominate. You got to learn how to dominate from an invisible love. An invisible love that you have for your craft. 
I'm not after success, I'm after my craft. My craft of flow state mastery, my flow state mastery craft is all one with me. So I'm alone with my craft, all one, right? Whereas success or happiness, these buzzwords, are decided upon by society. This is what success should look like. I'm sorry, but I don't care, okay? I don't care that that's how your idea of success looks like. I really don't give a shit, okay? So what? Your energy, bro, it introduces you before you even speak to me. I don't even need to know you, I know your energy. I don't even need to know you, I know your energy. Say that to yourself, really. It gives you your power back, right? It gives you that sense that I don't need to respond immediately to this thing. I can take my sweet ass time and have that abundance mindset, bro. It's like sometimes I'll find myself spending something or I'll be really like, oh, should I spend this much? I don't really know if... Listen, man, you got to understand something. You got to have the mindset that that doesn't leave a dent, bro. It doesn't. No scratches, no itches, whatever. You know, it's like, boom, that's just the way I am, you know? I'm not spending money, you know, to posture and prove something to you. That used to be me in the past, right? Buying all these shirts and jewelry and clothing and just stacking it up, you know? But now I really, I think I found my style, man. I think that I, I'm really starting to enjoy how I have a relationship with this priest beast archetype and with this character. A lot of people ask me like, how do you keep that beard, right? To that length or whatever. Hey man, uh, again, it comes down to the way that I speak to my body, okay? And I speak to my body like it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. You see, and that's why it modifies and it changes so fast. That's why I almost look like, you know what I look like, bro? I look like a 3D rendition, like an AI 3D rendition of a character right that just went through like the changes if you saw that video i posted in the primal sutra group where Sadhguru was saying that the avatars were actually different states of evolution right it's like pokemon like you're like this and then you go into this and then like you start off in the water the aquatic right right version and then you grow and then you go throughout time and then you have the you know, the smaller dwarf version and then you have all, all of these different you know styles different genres of people, these different avatars, right, of Vishnu. Start to understand that you might have different avatars for yourself too, but you haven't really optimized that, or you haven't claimed that, or you don't have access to the metaphysical realms where you can't actually see or get access to any other parallel versions of you, right? So once you start to understand that there is an invisible world of things that I don't understand and I don't know, but I'm willing to explore, I'm willing to learn, I'm willing to be a student, of life and spirituality. And once you embody this priest beast archetype and you understand that, hey, this is a lifestyle, this is not some kind of a move or a magic trick or some kind of a thing that I'm doing, but it's actually a way that you function in your daily life. Like the way that you see the world, the way you perceive things, okay? All right, guys, I have a client right now. Let's get it, Upward Spiral Gang. May we never be the same again. You already got this, man. Hit that like and subscribe button. We're all here to win and we're going to. That's just our norm. Now you might be saying, okay, but what's the difference between winning and success? For me, it's a win-win-win when I win. When I win, my tribe wins, and the universe wins. Humanity is a larger whole wins. You see? That's what I mean by a winner. I'm not like, I'm winning and everybody else is losing. That's again, that's posturing. That's a trauma response, bro. You get that? What, you have an issue with losing? I have no issue. Loss and gain and gain and loss and gain and loss and gain and loss and gain and gain and loss. I'm still the same motherfucker. I'm still eternal. Anyway, I'm ranting too much. Let's go. Hit that notification bell if you need more support and you know when my videos are dropping. You know, type something into the comments if you want a video on a certain topic. Let's go, man. We ain't got all day. Well, actually, we do. Because <laughs> we're timeless. Let's go. Boom.